RealCatholicTV.com has changed its name. We are now ChurchMilitant.tv. New name on the dog tags, same battle plan for the salvation of souls. ChurchMilitant.tv. Join us in combat. Become a premium member today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. At first, it might be strange to think of it this way, but it may very well turn out that Obama is a blessing in disguise for Catholics. His very presence has caused the great fissures and divisions in the church to be exposed, and exposing divisions is the first step to fixing them. How has he done this? Consider. Obama gets very misty-eyed when he talks about his formative years as a community organizer, whatever that is, which he learned at the feet of the modernist, Saul Alinsky-loving Catholic crowd in Chicago. You know, the social justice mob willing to jettison theology and replace it with Marxism. Obama drunk the poison of the Catholic social justice movement because it suits his view of the world. In so doing, he joined himself to his natural allies in the movement and as his political career advanced all the way to the White House, he continued these relationships right up to his Catholic vote squad designed to confuse Catholics into voting for him. So, given the rogues gallery of Catholics and name only he has standing beside him, it's easy for anyone to see the division in the church between faithful Catholics and modernist Catholics who really aren't Catholic in any meaningful sense. But there is another division, much more important, that has been revealed because of the Obama factor, and that is the ideological, philosophical, and political division that exists between so many bishops and clergy and the faithful flock. It is beyond argument that the history of the Catholic Church in America was tightly bound up with the Democratic Party. When European Catholic immigrants started landing on U.S. shores in the middle of the 19th century, it was Democratic politicians who organized them, signed them onto voter rolls, and used their growing numbers to secure political leverage. From around, from around 1928 on, a solid majority of Catholics voted Democrat for president, and this trend continued right up until the mid-1950s. Only then did the so-called Catholic vote start to become somewhat watered down, watered down from a Democratic Party perspective, that is. It's only in 1972, for the first time, that a majority of Catholics voted for the Republican, that was Richard Nixon. But by 1976, they were solidly back in the Democratic column, voting overwhelmingly for Jimmy Carter. And with the exception of Ronald Reagan, Catholic voters have given their support to every Democratic presidential candidate since, according to Gallup polling. While the numbers are not as high as they used to be, there is still a Democratic edge in Catholic voting. This is especially interesting when one considers that since the mid-1970s, the Democratic Party has essentially become the party of death and has now added to its creed the same-sex marriage party as well. While social and moral causes, the so-called values issues, issues, have definitely caused some of the Catholic vote to move into the Republican column, the average Catholic voter is still enraptured by all the rhetoric of the social justice movement that Democrats continually spew forth. This has caused a deep political division within the ranks of Catholics, creating the social justice Catholics and, on the other hand, the faithful Catholics, what author George Weigel inaccurately labels tribes. Social justice Catholics are essentially pick-and-choose Catholics. They are largely silent or indifferent on abortion and place fighting poverty on the same level, if not higher. This was one of the charges, in fact, leveled against the American nuns by the Vatican, that they spend too much time on poverty issues and say next to nothing, if anything, about abortion. Social justice Catholics also favor broad acceptance of illegal immigration, large government social help programs, limited defense spending, and so forth. They either support or once again give the proverbial wink and nod to the whole same-sex marriage battle. Faithful Catholics, on the other hand, see the immorality of intrinsic evils like abortion, stem cell research, same-sex marriage, contraception, and euthanasia, and are revolted by them. They would never dream of voting for a candidate who supports these things. But the dividing line becomes much more stark when we examine the political activity or approach of many American bishops, and their approach is what makes many Catholics suspect of their politics. After the 2008 election, one American bishop told a well-known journalist that he was certain that at least half, if not more, of the U.S. bishops voted for Obama. That's a very revealing comment. 
Most bishops in the U.S. are over 60 and may still have a nostalgia for the halcyon days of liberal American Catholicism which shaped so much of their early priesthoods and their seminary time. Most of the current U.S. bishops were ordained to the priesthood in the late 1960s or earlier. As with all Catholic voters back then, they came at the world from a certain perspective, as does everyone in every generation. There's a kind of default favorability on the part of many American bishops to the Democratic Party and its causes and legislation. The social justice Catholics and some bishops went politely ballistic over Congressman Paul Ryan's proposed budget, for example, blasting it for being anti-social justice. They practically, however, danced happily in the aisles over Obama's health care legislation until, too late, it became startlingly clear just exactly what it contained. Now they're suing him over part of it. But it is this democratic reflex on the part of so many bishops, all in the name of social justice, that gives a great pause to many faithful Catholics. The scandal at the Catholic Campaign for Human Development offices that is decades old now, the recently uncovered scandal and growing at the Catholic Relief Services offices, each group consorting with pro-death causes, again all in the name of fighting poverty. The recent revelations that the Chicago Archdiocese actually funded young Barack Obama in the ways of Saul Alinsky, the constant appeals to so-called environmental justice, which is really just another name for population control, the rather pointless and watered-down voters guide produced by the bishops that at the end of the day keeps the status quo in place and essentially says vote for whoever you want to with no concrete guidelines to help you decide. The list just keeps going, all of it, liberal pet projects, which many, many Catholics see as massively alarming and misguided, sacrificing issues of intrinsic evil in favor of nothing more than prudential judgment calls in areas that are not intrinsically evil. This balancing act on the part of many bishops, their staffs, and clergy has created a climate of suspicion among many mass-going Catholics. They simply cannot understand how issues like abortion and same-sex marriage are not slam-dunk issues for the hierarchy and that they should come out and denounce individual politicians that support them and, if they're Catholic, deny those politicians Holy Communion to boot. But this never happens, or practically never. Instead, what faithful Catholics see is pro-abort Catholic politicians thumbing their nose at Catholic teaching and the so-called social justice programs of these same politicians being supported by the bishops. And moreover, when faithful Catholics question this behavior, the establishment church circles the wagons and starts hurling down thunderbolts on them. It seems that the sympathies of many who exercise control in the church these days lie with the Democratic Party. Many faithful Catholics have walked away from the Democrats because of their support of intrinsic evils, despite what they say about poverty and social justice. The fact that almost no bishops have done so or continue to try and straddle the fence, but always with the default acceptance of the Democratic Party's version of social justice, this is a source of great division that the hierarchy has allowed to fester. When you add to the fact that many of the same bishops have shown a great reluctance to embrace the faithful Catholic crowd in other areas, like ending liturgical abuse, restoration of the traditional Latin Mass, the lack of confronting widespread dissent, and so forth, as well as continuing to keep more modernist-minded advisors in their inner circles and positions of authority, all of this adds up and creates an almost toxic environment and certainly does nothing to heal gaping divisions. The decided advantage Obama enjoyed among Catholic voters in 2008 has proven to be a white-hot spotlight on various divisions that exist in the church in America, from the social justice gang versus the faithful crowd to the Catholic establishment versus the Catholic piety crowd. One thing is certain, these divisions cannot continue without the whole house tumbling down. Obama may very well have given Catholics the chance to realize and bring into the open the existing divisions and start to fix them. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Churchmilitant.tv. Join us in combat, like us on Facebook.